Hi, I'm Adrian and I'm a designer. And my name is Florin and I'm a developer. And today we're going to talk about Viewport Unit to the VMAX! No? Okay. So, Viewport Units to the VMAX, that's, that's what we're going with today. It's like 80s retro. 80s retro. Well, something that looks 80s retro is this very interesting looking Coke that you brought from Mallorca. Um, yes, it's called Pep. Is it like Pep? Pep or? I don't, I don't know. I, well, let's try. Try that. So far, it looks like Coke. Here we go. Cool. Cheers. Yes. Extra batch of cinnamon. Very syrupy. It, this kind of tastes like um, the Red Bull Cola with some uh, of those uh, Haribo Cola bottles dissolved in it. <laughs> but it's good. I like it. Good. So viewport units. Yeah, viewport units. They seem like a really cool thing when they when they like came out. Everyone's like, yeah, viewport units, awesome. And then I don't really know what happened after that because I don't really use viewport units. Well, there are some uses for them. So, but I think it's best if we're going to show you what what they actually are and what they do and how they work. And what kinds they're actually are to see. So let's go to the demo machine. So we've got a little example set up here. Um, yep. It's just a red square, 100 pixels wide. A really wide, nice square. 100 pixel height. So let's say we want to do something with V H. And Which is actually the viewport height unit. Yeah. And they are divided into uh, into a hundred steps, so it's like one hundred percent, one hundred VH is one hundred percent of the viewport height. Yeah, and that's what we see here. It uh, it's the one hundred percent viewport height, and if we scale it, it will be it will scale nicely with it. And you that's can really cool actually. because yeah. we couldn't. Well, we could do it before, sort of. Yeah, but it was kind of a a, a pain in the ass to do that. Why, well, you know, JavaScript. Oh, don't get me started on JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the VH unit, there, yeah. but there is also... Actually, I can see use for this. I can see good use for this. Yeah, it's a really useful for unit. But there's also the VW, and it's like the viewport width, and it's also 100 viewport... V, VW is 100% of the viewport width. Yeah. And again, if I'm going to scale it, this will, will fit perfectly. Yeah, but this... I mean, I've... I'm a bit curious what this would actually be used for because a hundred percent of the viewport width it could also be set to hundred percent. No, uh, depends on your nesting. Uh, if you have a, like a parent element, that is true. Yeah. So, but let's continue with uh, with showing what units are. There are two more uh, viewport units which which can be quite useful as well. A um, bit more obscure, I think. Bit so. a little bit more obscure. I'm going to set the width again to one hundred pixels, and then I'm going to set the height to fifty. V min, which is it takes the, the it looks at the height and the width, and it takes the lesser of those two values, and then yeah. applies whatever you put in front. And of to it. show this example, I use fifty V min, so we can actually see when we resize the screen. Now, now the uh, the width is smaller than the height, and it will b become smaller. And there is a, a turnaround point where the height becomes smaller, and then it will not scale any bigger no, when because yeah. we don't scale it horizontally. Yeah, and it does that if I. Do this if you so, want to scale yeah. horizontally. Yeah, obviously. Okay, this is, this is one example. There is another example where we can show the V max unit, and it takes the maximum of the of those two. So basically, uh, the opposite of what we just looked at, like it, the V minus. Yeah. yeah. So again, if I scale, but it will not become any smaller because now the height is the bigger one of the two. Yeah. And yeah, once I make the width higher, it will use the width like that. Yeah, so that's these are basic. Cool. Th yeah, it's also pretty cool, but I think less useful. But these are the basic uh, units that we're units talking about. That we're talking about. Yes. So again, I, I quickly uh, noted on that that you could probably, at least for for v width, you you could use percentages in some cases. Yeah, like I but like I said, um, 
you could use it in some uh, in some some places where you'd have the full width of your body element or HTML mm. element. But let's say you have an absolute positioned element within another relative element, and you want it still to be like the whole screen width, and that's okay. quite hard to do with percentages. You have to actually use something like viewport width. Okay. Would yeah, but would you would you actually set a viewport width to a nested element? That that might be very hard to control. What happens? I there. don't know. Well, um, something that comes to mind is a modal dialog or a background, and you want to have that yeah, in yeah. an element and not have some floating bits around on your body uh, tag. You can yeah. have uh, something that's self-contained. Yeah. So you you you'd use it there. Yeah. So yeah, that that actually modal dialog. That's a pretty good example of of where we would use them. Yeah, or, or or the overlay behind the modal dialog, something like that. So that that's that would that, be that's pretty interesting actually. And I really like that you can actually set the full page height with just you know one line of CSS basically. Yeah, it's it's really, it's, really it, cool. it's really cool. Um, that makes all those hipster sites that have like uh, you know full page scrolling, like hero big hero yeah, image yeah, for they want easier. to fill the first page. Yeah, that yeah, makes much, it much, much easier. Much, much easier. That, that's that's right. So that's also one of the more useful uses for them. Um, oh. Yeah, but I think, yeah, you can also use use other units when it's possible. Uh, how do you mean that? Well, the percentage unit is maybe a better fit mm. in, in most cases, yeah. or in some cases, and the um, sometimes just em or pixels maybe. Maybe more appropriate yeah. to use, yeah. So, but there are some. I think they're still pretty niche, though. Like, have yeah. you, have you uh, come across them in your development work much? Well, like with the hero image, like you you, you said, I see, yeah. I've, I've seen I've seen them used there. But um, then it's mostly the the VH unit. It's the VH unit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, at least to me, it seems like the most useful one. But. Um, yeah, but there are also some some other use cases like. Um, Viewport size typography. I I have That's not seen um, real life uh, examples of, the, uh, nope. of this in the wild. Um, maybe there are some good. The internet is big, so there yeah. may be some site that that use it. But I, it's qu it's quite neat, and I want to show you how that works. So what we got here, just some text, and I said, okay, make the font size ten percent of the viewport width. And that's that's really cool because now when I scale the viewport width, it will always be in relation. It will actually it will never wrap differently. In, no, in, in it will always look the same. <clears throat> and whatever screen size we use, screen width we use, this will always look the same. That's actually pretty cool if you are uh, looking to make like responsive typography for uh, like big headlines, for instance. Exactly, and it will always fit. It will always fit. Yeah. Yeah, really but there nice. is a, there is a tiny problem with this. That in our in our current setup, it. First of all, it just looks at the viewport width. And if the viewport width is very small, the font size will be very small. So we have to do a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it kind of disappears there. <laughs> but there's a trick we can do to have like a minimum size on that. Yeah. And that's, we're going to use uh, the, the calc function uh, of CSS. And we will use 10% of the viewport width. And we'll add one. EM, or if you're fond of pixels, you can use pixels. Or we're going to use add a base size, and th that way, even if the viewport width will it's be get, getting smaller, 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 it will always be one EM plus that tiny bit, and that means that it will never be smaller than that one. Than one EM. EM. So you basically guarantee that it's still legible, even if the the yeah, browser window or screen Yeah, but then, but then, of course, small. then of course, it, it's going, it, it's going, going, it's going, it's going to wrap, yeah. and as you can see that here, but it will never be smaller than uh, one EM. I think I think it, it's probably a wise decision to choose for a, a, a wrapping headline rather than one that can't be read anymore at a certain point. I think that's uh, probably a good bet. And what we did is we just did something with the viewport width here, but uh, it's pretty easy to make this kind of work with the viewport height as well. And that's when we use v, v min because that way it will also scale when we change the the width the the height so if uh, the the height of course sorry uh, this would also be interesting if you were to like uh, make typography change if you for instance uh, orient a device differently so if you go from portrait to landscape mode for instance i can see some uses there yeah exactly so it would yeah. still still fit that's really cool yeah okay so for, for type i can definitely see some some very good uses for them that i haven't really 
thought of that much. That's, that sounds really cool. Because I, I did use, uh, I think it's called fittext.js. Yeah, and it which kind of basically does this. Well, it's probably a little bit more advanced and you have a little bit more control, but seriously, JavaScript to get. To set your type? To set your type. That, I, I, iffy. It's iffy. <laughs> yeah, and this, this, this works marginally well and it's really easy to set up. Mm -hmm. um, so why not use that? Yeah, I, I really like this. I think I might uh, actually try to incorporate this somewhere <laughs> if, I, if I can, if I find a, a good project for it. Yeah. So actually, we, we uh, have other demos that are not type related, right? No, 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 no. We have another demo. That's, uh, we're, we're going to have an element that's always going to fit on screen. And that's kind of cool, again, for things like modal dialogues or uh, pop-ups or things like that. Let's have a look. So what we got here is uh, a little box. Yeah, or so that's basically your dialogue. Yeah, uh, or quite a big box. Um, it's quite sizable. <laughs> yeah, and we set it up so it is to be square. So we give it, gave it a width of 90 V min and a height of 90 V min. And that means that it's going to always be square. Yeah, because they use the same. They're the same. Same. Unit. Yeah. We also gave it a margin of five femin, so in total it's going to be five femin left, five femin top, so it's going to be yeah, 100 percent. So it'll basically be centered. That's what it does, yeah. Um, yes, but not always. But not always. As yeah, we will you can, see. <laughs> yeah, you can see that right here. Um, we have set it up in a way that it will always fit in the height. But, but the width may not always fit. The, the width all will always fit, but may be smaller because it currently uses the height. Yeah. And oh, so that's just, why there's stay, space on the right. Yeah, and it will stay square. And if I'm going to make it smaller, it will get space at the bottom. But one interesting thing you, thing you see here is that it, it will actually have very beautiful margins. Yeah, they, actually they very scale, nicely they, proportional. They, really they, like they scale with my screen, and that, that's, that's really nice. So yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, for modal dialogues or for pop-ups, I can definitely see that. Even though I kind of dislike pop-ups, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do. But I can also see um, when I look at this demo that you made, I I can actually see how you could use these units to create really cool, responsive ways of dividing space yeah, on a page. Shit. Because what I did here, did here, I just made one box. Yeah, but you could also have multiple boxes that exactly. relate to each other and have different different settings, and that, that could be really, really cool. I think we so could... as well. And if you combine it with something like Flexbox, I haven't tried that yet, but that may be have a really cool. interesting, really interesting effect. So you, could you do like responsive without uh, media queries? Um, You're gonna have to, 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 some, to some to some extent, but I guess um, we're gonna have to talk to uh, Fazilis van Gamert about this because. Yeah. He, he actually gave a talk about this. It's really interesting. Yes. So, but there <coughs> are some drawbacks when using viewport units. So, uh, yeah. be careful. Um, one of the things is, and I'm really not sure why the standards people chose to do this, to define it like this. And that's 100 viewport width will include the space bar, uh, the scroll bar. Scroll bar. Yeah. So that's really whenever you use an element that's 100 viewport width, it will also get a horizontal scrolling. You will get a horizontal scrolling. Yeah, because what, what happens is it will include the right scroll bar. So Yeah, and then it will have overflow on that side because that yeah. space isn't really there to use. Yeah, so for, okay. and then that's why the viewport width unit may be less useful mm. and you'd be better off in a lot of cases to use 100%. Hmm. It's fine if you use margins because they will again that will work. Yeah, that will that will scale nicely. <laughs> yeah, because the margin will not affect the uh, the scroll bar. On that as side. long as you don't set the uh, the element inside those margins. Yeah, exactly. To yeah. Also, <laughs> to eat up the rest of the space with yeah. the same uh, viewport unit. Then that's yeah. Okay. So so for viewport width, it may be less useful because we're not that used to horizontal scroll. Maybe nope. if you have an interface that relies one hundred percent on horizontal scrolling, that that's going to be fine. But. Um, the problem is less apparent with viewport height because most sites, most applications have they have the scroll. They, ha they have they have a horizontal scroll, a vertical scroll bar. So that's not going to be 
that big of a deal. No, exactly, and they don't have yeah they don't have a scroll bar at the bottom, so that even if it were to include that space, it doesn't really matter. No, and there is of course the V Max unit, which I think is a bit weird. less useful. I have not come up with something that I would want to use it for. I mean, the V Min unit that's going to be really useful. Yeah, I mean for the uh, like the demo that we made uh, with the box that always uh, stays in there that uses V Min or the uh, the typography demo that we did with. So it always fits in inside the box. Exactly. Is also dependent on Vmin, which is, you know, that's a very useful unit, I think. But Vmax, I'm I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well maybe 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 some of our viewers can come up with interesting ways to yeah, use it. Yeah, write us a comment. Or an email or anything. Or Send hit, that hit, hit him up on Twitter. Or carrier pigeon. I'm I'm cool either way. <laughs> okay. So what we have, okay, we did some demonstrations. We uh, see this really can, can be really useful. Mm -hmm. It can also a bit of sometimes a bit of a hassle to to work with. As I think so, yeah. Yeah, if you want to go full, really full width. Um, now the, the the big question that's that's still left here is what is support like? That's actually pretty decent. Um, it works in the major browsers, even in iOS Safari. Um, it works in Internet Explorer and Edge, Internet Explorer from Nine. There are some issues. I think Internet Explorer doesn't really support VMAX, but we talked about, OK, how useful is VMAX? Yeah. So there used to be a weird bug in, in iOS Safari with uh, VH. Yeah, but they fixed that. I think they fixed it now in the yeah. new versions, yeah. But it's quite, the unit can be fallbacked quite easily. I mean, especially <laughs> if you had the, the hero image case, yep. you can just say, okay, a fallback of height, this amount of pixels or this amount of EM or whatever, and yeah, it you, will you not- You just fix it. It might not look nice if the, if the uh, screen height is lower than that. Yeah, and <laughs> it goes past it, but still you scroll past it and yeah, that's, it's good. I mean, it would still be usable. That's basically yeah, what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, that's what we're to trying achieve, to achieve yeah. here, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I guess support is pretty good and fall can be pretty easy, so okay. why well, not use it today? I'm looking forward to tinkering some with that. Uh, I think there might be some very, very interesting things to, to be done, especially in dividing up space. I really like the, the demo that you made yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay, so thank you all for uh, watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And thanks a lot to our sponsors, DigiPaint and Photo. And we'll see you in the next one.